Today we're talking about how do you infuse your faith into your business? Hey, hey. Hi. I'm recording Goddess CEO Live right now. So today we're doing live recording. Goddess CEO, if you don't know, um, Goddess CEO is my new podcast that launched back in April. So several months ago, we are now on episode 11. So this is a recording of episode 11. Um, And I normally don't do it live. The reason I love podcasting is because I can record it wherever, whenever, however. And I will be, um, sometimes it's five in the morning and I'll be in my bed, not at 5 a.m. I'll be like down in the basement at 5 a.m. or I'll be on a walk. Um, I can do it whenever and however. So that's why I love podcasting. So today I'm actually going to record it live. So this is episode 11 of Goddess CEO. And Goddess CEO airs every Sunday morning. You can find it every single Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Mountain Time is a new podcast. Thanks all for joining in. If you know of anyone who is thinking about launching a business or who owns a business, share this, tag them, thumbs up, like this, uh, so we can get the word out. And um, like I said, subscribe and and listen to Goddess CEO if you go to oliviaomega.com forward slash podcast, then you can find all of the ways you can listen to Goddess CEO. And it's available on every every place and everywhere that you listen to podcasts, Um, Apple Podcasts or iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and a host of other places. So you shouldn't be able to, or you shouldn't miss it welcome back everyone to god is ceo podcast with olivia today we're talking about something that um can be tricky this can be a little bit hard a little bit tricky and i actually have seen this come up a couple different times now on a facebook group that i'm in and some other social media platforms um in the the time in the the age that we're in right now of really our personal values our beliefs, things that are important to us are coming now to the forefront. And it's interesting because there's this notion of corporate activism. And corporate activism is when a corporation or a group of companies actually create statements, we've seen this a lot, right? On the things that they are for and the things that they believe. They can be political, but they can also be in other areas. We've seen this a lot recently with Black Lives Matter. We see it with sustainability. We've seen it, um, corporate activism in the the notion of gender equality, um, and and the list kind of goes on. And so this brings up this question and the notion that Um, As entrepreneurs, as business owners, we also have this opportunity, this new great opportunity um, to infuse what we believe. And this is this melding, right? The blending of business and beliefs. So today we're talking about how to infuse faith into our businesses. And I have six ways that we're going to be able to do this. Today is a part one of two parts. So today we're talking about all of this internal work. So these are our things internally in our business, within ourselves as a CEO, as a entrepreneur and as a business owner that we need to look at ways that we can step into this, right? And then next week in part two, we're gonna talk about um, this other half of external communication. So my background is in branding and marketing. How do we communicate this belief, faith, Etc. to our clients, to our potential client, clients, to um, in our marketing, in our branding, etc. So today we're going to do that internal work it has to happen first before we actually do this externally. So the first one, this is number one of six of ways to infuse faith into your business is to understand that this is bigger than just us. So understanding that this is bigger than you, your business, your products, and your services. And with that understanding, we can go further in thinking about why we even have our businesses. When people ask me why I started my first company, maybe not my first, my first was a really long time ago, but when I left my corporate job and I started my business, the question was, 
um, why? Why did you do that? What was your why? We, we talk about that a lot, like start with why, what was your why? And a lot of times people think that my why was really about um, wanting to own something and being brave. Gosh, Olivia, you're so brave and you're so courageous to jump out on your own and to start your own business. But for a lot of people, a lot of women, a lot of women of color, the reason we launched and started wasn't out of this courageous, like, I'm going to be my own boss and let me go and do this thing. It really was out of necessity. So there's really, for me personally, a lot of um, uh, failure and angst and frustration in my career that led me to leave the company that I worked for. So and then out of necessity, I had to make a living. I had to leave. I had to be healthier. I had to be happier. Um, I was desperate to have a change in my life. I didn't want to make this change. I didn't want to leave corporate and I didn't want to start a company, but I had to. So thinking about that was my base natural reason for starting my company. But this step one about understanding that this is bigger than that goes beyond the product and the service that we offer. If um, you are a web designer, you are offering this amazing, beautiful gift of a website to business owners that need it, need a website to grow your, your business. So you're offering that as a service, as a um, digital product, right? But at the end of the day, when we, this is a challenge you're thinking, at the end of the day, when we pass away, when we are done on this earth, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the work day, what have we, the question is, what have we really brought to the communities around us, to our clients, to society, to our families? What, what really is that bigger purpose of having a business and operating in commerce? It doesn't matter if you are a illustrator, if you are a business coach, at the end of the day, it, this is bigger than your tangible thing, right? And again, we're talking about ways to infuse faith into your business. The first way to do that is to understand this is bigger than what you provide. So for me personally, and this is going to be different for each and every one of us, when I think about brand strategy, brand coaching, marketing, I hope that at the end of the day, what I'm bringing my clients is joy and hope and a hope in being being entrepreneurs and being able to have that freedom and being encouraged. I hope that I can encourage them to live authentically. I hope that I can encourage them to to live a life that they love. It goes beyond my brand strategy, right? I'm, I'm offering this a service. But beyond that, I am in people's lives, I know, and you are in people's lives, you are in your clients' lives and your customers' lives for a bigger reason beyond the thing that you are selling them. So starting there and understanding that, this is that internal work, will help us to infuse faith into our business. All right, so that was number one. And I'm going to, I'm gonna have to switch screens a little bit here. I'm gonna quickly read, because I, I always want, there, there's a lot of things that, that are um, good ideas. <laughs> Where I'm like, oh, Olivia, that, 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 that sounds pretty good. Like, that's good. But I always want to relate things back to the Bible and back to, to Scripture. Scripture and Bible has been given to us as a way and a means to live out this, this life that we are living here on earth, right? This is our instruction and our guide. So I always want to tie things back to that. So for this first step, understanding that this goes beyond, this is bigger than your product or your service, the scripture that I want to tie it to in this scripture, I really live off of. This is like the the um, the cornerstone, for lack of better words, of my personal brand of who I am. And that is Genesis 12, verse 1 through 3. And it says, I'm trying to read here, go from where you are to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great. Make, make your name great. This is branding, right? Make your business known, increase brand awareness, make yourself uh, an expert in something. I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing. 
and I will bless those who bless you, and all of the people on the earth will be blessed through you. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. And this is not blessed by my web development skills. This is not necessarily blessed by, you know, Olivia giving brand strategy. But beyond that, this is blessed because I want to encourage and provide hope and love and encouragement to those people that I am um, working with as clients. All right, so that, that's number one. Number two of the ways you can infuse faith into your business is to schedule frequent and regular meetings with your CEO. So the whole premise of this podcast, God C- God is CEO, is that the CEO of our businesses is not really us, though some of us like to wear that title and um, like to, you know, have that on our business cards and in our email uh, signatures, etc., that we are the CEO of our business. The premises of this podcast is to really take shift that position. I'm going to take myself out of the CEO spot. I'm going to put myself in the driver's seat. I'm sorry, in the passenger seat. <laughs> and I'm going to put God in the driver's seat of my business. So if I am scheduling regularly scheduled frequent meetings with my CEO, I'm able to pause and listen. We think about the job of a CEO in a big corporation is to guide the ship, right? They are the person who is um, guiding uh, the, the path and the vision of the company. And they're the ones that ultimately make the, the call at the end of the day. They're also the ones that see that bigger picture of what's happening in the industry, in society, all of these factors with the stock market, et cetera. They're, they've got that big picture hat on so that then they can direct everyone else in the company, the C-suite, the um, leadership, the VPs, et cetera, on how to navigate properly. So as we are having these meetings, and some people, I I know a woman who literally gets up at five in the morning and goes on a walk, weather permitting. And during that walk, that is her meeting with her CEO. So that is her time to get quiet, to get still, to pray, um, to, to seek guidance from God as the CEO of your business. How should I move? What should I say? What for this year are my big goals? How should I you know, launch this prod product, you know, how should I move forward with this project, et cetera. The way I do it, and I'm not as consistent as I should be, but in the mornings, and this could be 5 a.m., sometimes it's 5 a.m., sometimes it's 6, sometimes it's 7 a.m., but I will get up and I will have my worship music on and I just am spending the time. And then I take out a journal and I write down every all of those downloads that God gives me in that moment. And those downloads could be as simple as, Olivia, today I want you to take your time and designate today to work on your business, right? There's a difference between on your business and in your business. So let's put the clients aside. I know that the you know clients are priority, blah, blah, blah. And I'm always focusing on getting the work done for the client. And that means I'm neglecting the work for my own business, my own clarity, my own marketing, updating my own website. And so sometimes it'll be as simple as, this is what I need you to do today. Or it could be big picture, like, hey, Olivia, I know that the world is shifting and changing and the market is shifting and changing in this way. God can see the future. We can't. Um, I want you to explore this. Or even just recently, this is like so amazing that I was sitting down and thinking, okay, the way... I am shifting my speaking career and what I'm speaking on. I need to find a couple of really good books that I can read to help enhance the learning and the studying I'm doing around my speaking topics. And so I went on Amazon and I just started Googling and searching. And the Holy Spirit said, look up. It was a combination of words that I hadn't thought about looking up. And the first book that book that popped up was a book um, that looked interesting. And God was like, this one, add this one to your reading list. I'm like, all right, cool. Come to find out, literally found out that um, a couple days later that the person who wrote the book is local here in Colorado and uh, is a professor at my alma mater, 
which I speak at and I've been wanting to do more speaking. So I reached out to this person on Instagram, uh, I'm sorry, on LinkedIn. And now we're, I'm, I'm starting this conversation with this person. It's so cool. But again, that was a quick download that I didn't, I wouldn't have gotten working in my own Olivia mind and my own limited uh, capability. So having those regularly scheduled frequent meetings with our CEO, pausing, being still, praying, but also taking those downloads. God, what do you have for me? And what do you want to say? How do you want to direct me right now? And then writing those down. And so the tie back to this and the scripture to this is 1 Corinthians 4 and 1. And if you're just tuning in, we're talking about six ways you can infuse faith into your business, especially now, especially in these times. So 1 Corinthians 4 and 1 is this then is how you ought to regard us, us, us's, us people, as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. In the morning, I literally have a meeting with my CEO, God, and I say, what mystery do you want to reveal to me today? What mystery do you have for me today? What secret, what insight into my business, what insight into my customer do you want to download to me today? And I write it down. And oftentimes he will download to me what he already has. He's like, all right, Liv, I already said to do this and you haven't done it. Or I already said, here's an insight into your customer that you really haven't acted on. So a lot of times the downloads I get are nothing amazingly new. It's just a reminder of what he's already told me to do. And then when I'm obedient, I see doors open up. I see, um, things become easier in marketing i see income i see fl- i see new contracts i see new partnerships i see um opened uh target audiences i see blue seas if you are a, if you're familiar with the book um red red sea i think it's called red sea blue sea or just that notion of red sea blue sea when we talk about saturated marketplaces i start to see and have these um aha moments of blue sea open unsaturated markets that i can play in or that my client can play in because i spent time with my ceo in prayer all right that was number two number three is relinquish or let go of your expert status take off your expert hat and this is really interesting because i've spent a lot of time coaching women specifically women entrepreneurs, to label themselves as an expert. And a lot of times um, we feel like, oh, I'm not an expert, or I don't want to label myself as an expert because I'm not better than anyone else. We have all of these like imposter syndrome things that are swirling around in our mind that really secretly whisper to us, you are not an expert, you are not worthy to set yourself above, you can't write this book, you can't do this talk, or you can't have this business because you don't know what you're doing or you're not an expert. And so I've spent a lot of time talking with and coaching women to um, silence those negative thoughts and uh, uh, notions so that they can label themselves as an expert and have the freedom and the confidence to do so. So in this way to infuse faith into your business, for a moment, just a moment, is to take off that expert hat because I want you to put it back on. (laughs) Take it off just for a moment and truly rely on um, the Holy Spirit as an expert in that. This is this notion of praying without ceasing. And number two and three are very similar. They overlap, right? Um, Having regularly scheduled meetings with our CEO, praying, and then number three of relinquishing our expert hat and allowing God to move. And this is that, I literally just, I have a t-shirt that says this, and this is my one, I'm only gonna have one Hamilton reference today, just one. Um, And the reference is that whole like, worry less, pray more. So instead of, what is it in, in Hamilton? It's talk less, smile more. So worry less, pray more. Um, relinquishing our expert hat. And the really awesome example of this, there's many, many examples of this story in the Bible. But 
One is is where Jesus is pulled in the disciples, and just just to remind y'all, if you're not familiar, the disciples were fishermen. These were experts in their field, and then not only were they fishermen, but they were generational fishermen, right? Their father was a fisherman, their grandfather, their son, etc. This was in the family, and so they were experts. Before Jesus came along, they were fishing and not just like out and I always say this like I have I use fish I use fishing analogies though please don't judge I have never been fishing I think I may have been fishing once way way back when I was a kid maybe I don't remember but let's just I've never been fishing though I love this analogy so these men were experts they've been doing this for years and it's been in their generate their family for generation on how to fish where to fish what bait to use what nets to use on and on and on right well in this spe- um, specific parable in this story we're we're looking in john 21 and in that around john 21 they are the the disciples this is um thomas and them Nathaniel and them, this is, you know, all of these, these guys, um, this is Simon Peter, all of these, these guys who are experts are fishing and they aren't finding anything. And they're not just going out and spending an hour or two, they're literally spending the entire day and even overnight, all night long into the next morning fishing and they were finding nothing. And this is, their livelihood is based on this. For us as entrepreneurs, our livelihood is based on our marketing, our branding, our sales capabilities, bringing in new contracts, new clients, selling more product. It's tied to our livelihood. For those of you with employees, it's tied to being able to pay your employees so they can put food on their table. It's also our livelihood so we can put food on our table. So it's a big deal. So when they're fishing all day and all night and multiple days of this with not a single fish, not even one, something is wrong. And in the in our natural minds, a lot of times we'll go into our natural minds about how our business is working and um, the way it should work. If you know, and this, this goes back to um, my land of marketing and branding, if I know marketing is and sales is a numbers game, and if I know that if I do a Facebook ad and I am paying to get 3,000 impressions on that ad, I know that my conversion rate is usually about 5%, which is pretty good. And so I know that at least 5% of those 3,000 people who saw that ad are going to sign up for my download, my checklist, my you know X, Y, and Z. And of those people who download my freebie, I know that another small percentage of them are going to convert and purchase my book, my consulting package, you know, whatever I have. We, we, we know our numbers and if you don't know your numbers you should learn your numbers so from a natural standpoint because i'm the expert right i have this expert hat on of marketing and i know my business i know my conversion rates something is not right and anytime in the natural things don't make sense and they don't add up i personally from experience know that i need to think spiritually like all right let's not think naturally anymore let's think spiritually because god i don't know what the heck's happening i don't know what's going on and this is this has been the case with clients too where i'm like i'm doing everything as an expert i know to do to help my client get more sales to help my client build their list to help them put food on the table and if something isn't clicking and not working and it doesn't make sense because i've done everything in the natural i immediately go to spiritual and sometimes my clients don't even know that my clients may not be spiritual they might not know that i am praying for them but then but i shift to worry less pray more in those situations and understanding what do i need to do from a spiritual level so going back to the fishermen they've been fishing they're not finding anything nothing's coming up not a single fish and jesus came in and said let's do something totally different now jesus was not a fisherman jesus was a carpenter And so they're like, okay, you are the son of God. Yes, awesome. But we know what we're doing. We've been doing this for generations. We've been doing this for decades. And he said, and I'm just gonna read it real fast. John, this is in John 21, verse six. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat. They were fishing on the left side of the boat. 
because they're experts. Jesus said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some fish. Here's the key. They did what he said. They did. They were unable to haul the net because of the large numbers of fish. When they obeyed and they tried something new and they weren't looking at the natural, but shifting to the spiritual, relinquishing their expert hat, taking that off for a moment. Let's do what God says. Let's do what's being imparted into us. They put the nets on the right side and they literally could not pull the nets up because they were overflowing with fish. So I want to encourage you, this is number three of ways you can infuse faith into your business is to take off your expert hat every once in a while to truly worry less, pray more, listen to God and and be obedient. Uh, it's so funny that these these steps are so simple they're so simple and yet they're the hardest things for us to actually do myself included for sure so that was number three number four this is this is the last step in infusing faith into your business that's internal so this internal work that we do internally again next week we're going to talk about part two which will be the external, this is communication, branding, marketing side of this. So the last one, number four is honor God in all that you do. And sometimes we think, oh yeah, that's simple, but it, it can be hard to do because now we're talking about integrity in our business, being honest and truthful to our customers we're going to talk about marketing next week and being on, honest and having integrity in marketing, which is a whole another layer. But until internally in the internal work, until we can be honest and have integrity in in our own actions and self, then we can't do that externally with marketing. Um, thinking about being good stewards of our money as entrepreneurs, paying our taxes as entrepreneurs and this gets hard I'm gonna I'm I'm always open and vulnerable so if y'all if if you have any questions or you're like Olivia how did you deal with please reach out to me I am an open book and I will be open and honest and vulnerable here in that in the past years ago um, not making enough money to pay taxes and then when you tip that that scale right now you're in a place where you're not just bringing in a, you know, this isn't just a side hustle and you're bringing in a thousand dollars a year or whatever. Now you need to pay taxes. I will be honest with you way back in the day, I wasn't making enough money to pay taxes. And so in my mind, this is as a single parent, just, you know, fresh out of divorce, um, working for myself, trying to make ends meet. I could either pay taxes off the top, which is what we should do or i could have enough money to feed my kids and i know if i pay taxes off the top i won't be able to pay my rent and i won't be able to put food on the table and so i didn't y'all for a couple years and it bit me in the butt because i had to go pay back taxes now as as a more mature entrepreneur and more mature in my walk with God as an entrepreneur, I have faith in knowing, and this is the way I operate now, is that if I take off the top what I need to, so off the top comes tithes and taxes for me, somehow God is amazing because he makes it add up and he makes it work. So instead of being in that lack mentality that I've been in in the past of, I can't pay taxes because I won't be able to pay my bills, I'll have to just pay it later, now, I am making a little bit more money than I was then, but now, when I pay tithes and taxes off the top, somehow, supernaturally, God adds it up, I get a new client, I, something happens to where I'm able to pay my bills. It works, but it takes faith. It takes a lot of faith to work that way. Um, the other thing, it, like I mentioned earlier, is praying for my clients. The way, the way I'm honoring God in all that I do is making sure that even when I'm directing clients to do something that I'm still pausing to hear from him. So hopefully that helps. The scripture for that fourth one is Proverbs 3 and 5. And it says, seek his will in all that you do and he will show you which path to take. 
So again, this was six ways, simple but not easy, six ways to infuse faith into your business. Today we talked about those first four, which were understanding that this is bigger than you, your products and your service is number one. Number two, scheduling frequent and regular meetings with your CEO, God, not yourself, God. (laughs) Number three, relinquish your expert status. Take off your expert hat for a couple moments and really allow God to direct you, even in those places that you feel like you already know what to do. And then number four is honoring God in all that you do. This speaks to integrity in your business. This speaks to um, honesty with your customers and your clients. This also talks to honoring God and being a good servant of your money as well. And then uh, encompassing all of that is really this underlining notion of worrying less and praying more. I hope this blessed you. I really hope it did. And like I said, these are super simple concepts, but they're really easy to, I'm sorry, flip that, reverse it. (laughs) Very simple concepts, but they're very hard to actually implement and implement consistently. So I am praying for you. Um, Please pray for me that we can um, just infuse more faith into our business and really reap those benefits um, monetarily, just um, being able to bless those around us in that way. Stay tuned for next week. Again, uh, Goddess CEO comes on every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. Next week, we're going to go into part two of this and talk about those additional two ways to infuse faith into your business from an external standpoint. So this is marketing, branding, communications, etc. Thank you so, so much for tuning in and listening. Subscribe to Goddess CEO anywhere and everywhere that you listen to podcasts. And I will talk to you next time.